You know, I know it's going to be a light day, so feel free to move in, sit closer together than one another. You know, it's a little cooler, so share your warmth. Don't worry, nobody in here bites, I think. Anyway, it is Pentecost, so it's a, a wonderful day. We get to talk about the Holy Spirit and all that the Holy Spirit does for us. Uh, we had a wonderful weekend. It's also Memorial Day, so we're remembering the uh, service members who gave their life. And today we have a unique prelude. So instead of sitting back and listening and refocusing ourselves, we're going to reinvigorate ourselves and move with some music. I also have a question for you. Do you like my outfit? I will be addressing that in my sermon, by the way, so that's why I ask it. Your TV, I turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone, and happy Pentecost. Because uh, Pentecost is a time when we rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are also reminded that on Pentecost, suddenly everyone could hear in their own languages. And we are going to sing um, some Nigerian words. So we are going to uh, connect with our brothers and sisters in Africa. The words for you, please repeat after me, are wa wa wa. E me mi mo. Wa 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 e me mi mo. E me mi mo. Then it's wa wa wa. Interesting that it's three, huh? Alagbara. Yes, just go with it. Don't think about it too much, you know. Alagbara. And finally, it's wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I would like us all in a moment when I say, let's go for it, uh, to stand. And what will happen is during this first part, we will raise our hands. And if you're thinking, I am a Lutheran, we don't raise our hands during worship. Um, I had a dear friend in Los Angeles from Nigeria, and she said, why don't we move during worship? And so if you don't feel like it, you have permission. But I do welcome you to try it because it's just a little something different. We're going to um, be uh, singing. The words are, and now I'll repeat the second, which is the English, Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. And we will practice this, don't worry. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Come, O Holy Spirit. And then it's finally, come, come, come. And those words, we will move like this. And you can just follow me. You don't have to memorize it. Don't worry. Like this. To our heart. All right? So, let's sing the uh, notes. Uh, let me get my notes. And the choir will be leading you. And uh, why not? Um, we will first sing it for you. And then, uh, but why don't you stand up in preparation? And after you hear it a couple times, join us. Join us. So Don't worry. And arms up. Whoa. 
Well, now that everyone is invigorated, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to, to God, who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to kneel as we take a moment in self-reflection. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us rise and greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace be with you, brother. Peace be with you, sister. Peace be with you. Oh, let's do this one. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, govern our hearts that we may never forget your blessings, but steadfastly thank and praise you for all your goodness in this life, until, with all your saints, we praise you eternally in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children down to the Fireside Lounge for Children's Church. The scripture lesson for today is from 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 5 through 28. But Jehoshaphat also said to Ahab, the king of Israel, Inquire first for the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 of them, and said to them, Shall I go to battle against Ramoth-Gilead, or shall I refrain? They said, 
Go up, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no other prophet of the Lord here of whom I may inquire? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one other by whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah, son of Imlah. But I hate him, for he never prophesies anything favorable about me, but only disaster. Jehoshaphat said, Let the king not say such a thing. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah, son of Imlah. Now the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah were sitting on their thrones, arrayed in their robes at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, son of Chenianah, made for himself horns of iron, and he said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Ar Arameans until they are destroyed. All the prophets were prophesying the same and saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the words of the prophets with one accord are favorable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. When he had come to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we refrain? He answered him, Go up and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But the king said to him, how many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy anything favorable about me? but only disaster? And Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, with all the host of heaven standing beside him, to the right and to the left of him. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab, so that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Then one said one thing, and another said another, until the spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, saying, I will entice him. How? the Lord asked him. He replied, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then the Lord said, You are to entice him, and you will succeed. Go out and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these your prophets. The Lord has to Creed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kaniah, came up to Micaiah, slapped him on the cheek, and said, Which way did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? Micaiah replied, You will find out on that day when you go in to hide in an inner chamber. The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him on reduced rations of bread and water until I come in peace. Micaiah said, If you return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Hear you peoples, all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Let us rise for our Alleluia verse.
Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is Pentecost, or at least we're celebrating it today. And we are talking about the, Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit. And I do not believe that we as Christians often talk about the Holy Spirit, or at least not enough, and the work that is done by and through the Spirit. So I'm excited for this day each year. Now today's text may seem rather long or in comparison to what we normally read, but the main point of the whole reading may be focused down to a single word, truth. And if you notice, you'll see it throughout our bulletin, in our hymns, and in this message. And if you don't, let's talk afterwards and I'll help you find it. But we have many stories, tales, quotes about truth. Often, our stories or tales that we tell are designed to remind us to tell the truth. Perhaps you can recall these tales. Pinocchio, the emperor's new clothes, and the boy who cried wolf, to name a few of the more familiar tales about truth. Now, there are certainly many more, and some we have probably never heard of, but in all but the extreme cases, the lessons to be learned is that to tell the truth at the risk of bad things happening when we don't. And there are many phrases that go along with telling the truth, and I'm sure many of us have heard, I cannot tell a lie being attributed to a certain president. president. But that wasn't necessarily true. And there's another phrase. People will ask, do you want to know the truth? Now this may seem like a pointless question. Of course we want to hear the truth, right? Well, to tell you the truth, we may not always want to hear the truth. And I've seen and heard conversations where someone will ask a question in anticipation of an answer that agrees with their opinion. This is evident when the asker is caught off guard by the response. It may also be clear that one is seeking validation rather than truth when asking, what do you think of my outfit? I know not everybody likes this, so it's okay. There are certainly uh, other questions that fall in line with this thinking. Does the asker really want to hear that their outfit doesn't look good? Or that it makes them look heavier than they are? Now, most of the time, we perceive that we are better off not telling the truth. Or more to the point that the asker is not looking for the truth. And this reminds me of one last phrase. You can't handle the truth. Sorry, I'm no Jack Nicholson. He does it much better than me. Now really, in that last phrase, is likely what we see going on in our text. It appears that the king of Israel, Ahab, is unable to handle the truth. Perhaps there's some resistance to the truth as well, but it's complicated. The main complication is who the kings can trust. This is always a complication for people in places of power or authority. Especially like when you ask a joke or tell a joke, are the people really laughing because you're funny or because you're just in charge and they don't want to hurt your feelings? So when you're unsure of someone's intentions or you're seeking advice, then you will call your most trusted advisors and that is just what the two kings did. Now the kings are talking about what their next course of action should be, and specifically whether or not they should go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or should they refrain. Without a doubt, this is a huge decision to make. We too may be faced with really difficult decisions. When we need help with these decisions, to whom do you go? You may reach out to any number of people, but certainly someone whom you trust. The two kings do the same thing. 
they reach out to their trusted prophets. Now there are, other like, there are likely others, such as officials and some other advisors within this group. But the kings have reached a decision to come together, to join forces against a common enemy. Now there are issues with Ahab that we do not have in this section of text, but it seems like he has, Ahab has a habit of not listening to the word of God. Perhaps this is why he wasn't looking forward to hearing from Micaiah. However, Jehoshaphat did what we should all do, and that is to seek out the word of God. Both kings heard from the gathered prophets and advisors and the advice that they offered. And there's something interesting in their reactions. One, Ahab, appears not to seek the truth or God's word, but only would like to hear that which is pleasing to his ears. Each of the visors appear to merely be giving lip service, telling the kings what will make them happy. Like, who wouldn't want to be the conquering hero king, right? However, Jehoshaphat seems to doubt what he is hearing, or he is noticing the absence of God's word. Now, we may never know what he was thinking or why he had issue with what he heard. But he called for another voice, one that will bring the word of God to the situation. The lesson for us in this is to always seek out God's word in all that we do. We should not put his will ahead of our own, for our heart may chase after desires of the flesh. That may not always be in our best interest. However, when we follow God's will and his word, we will find that it is not only what is best for us, but for all. God seeks that we may all live in peace with one another and care for one another, loving our neighbors as ourselves. It is not only right to go to God in prayer, but it is the best thing that we can do for ourselves and others. In prayer, we not only acknowledge that we are not in control, but we offer to God praises, and we give to him anything that may be causing us distress. We give up our stressors, our woes, and in turn, God restores our peace and answers our prayers. And even if that answer is no, God has heard us. Now there's so much more to pull from our text, but the last point that I pull from our text is spoken by Micaiah. As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. The Holy Spirit is at work in him, and he will speak the truth even if it isn't what the king wants to hear, or whether or not the king can handle the truth. He warns of the impending battle will be the death of the king, and that they should not go to war. God's wisdom is far better than, his, than ours, and his word is not stagnant, but ever living and continues to be relevant to us today. There may, may be those who fail to see the power of the Bible and choose instead to put their faith elsewhere, even in themselves. For those of faith, we can hear the truth in God's message to his people. We turn to, to the Bible to learn what we should do because it is as relevant today as it was when it was spoken so long ago. Let us too hear the Holy Spirit, and let it guide our lives. Only the truth comes from the Spirit, nothing else. We may try to listen to false prophets or those who will tell us just what we want to hear, but it will be to our ruin. We can try to ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit, try to shut it out from our minds, but it will still be there, no matter how quiet we try to make it. The truth will stay with us, always.
even when we are dealing with people or groups with whom we do not agree. The Holy Spirit will still speak the truth and tell us to deal fairly with them, as we should, as we would want to be treated. It will free us to love instead of hating or fear-mongering. It will teach us to first seek to understand rather than regurgitating hateful spite when we are fear of what we do not understand. This can also be said as, even though we are telling the truth, we can say it kinder, nicer. So when someone asks if we like their outfit, we do not have to blurt out, ew, no, but rather we can be gentle with it and approach it as we know the other person would appreciate or as we would like to hear. So instead of that previous response, say, I don't like it, but if you like it, then go with your comfort level. Use your discretion when you're in those situations. And I'm sure you can imagine a time when someone disagreed with you and didn't show any care about your point of view or your opinion and instead told you you were wrong. Now I've used the analogy of speaking someone over a chasm to explain this dynamic. And even though we may speak in truth, and sometimes not, we should show care for the other person in our interactions. However, above all of this, our Savior Jesus has already taught us these lessons in word and in deed. He ate with sinners, those who were considered the lowest of the lows in society, and he told his disciples to love one another. Now, if this isn't clear enough, he took every single sin upon himself, not for just those who were close to perfect or nearly there, but for even those who we would consider to be unredeemable. He went freely to the cross to redeem us and pay the ultimate price for our sins, since we could not redeem ourselves. We must remember the love, mercy, and grace shown to us by our Father in our daily lives. If we keep this with us, and God's word is on our hearts, then not only will the world be a better place, but more people will see the redeeming gift that God has given to us in Christ. We are able to, forget, to love and to forgive because we have first been loved and forgiven. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise as we join our voices.
Having heard God's word, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the night he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of God's Amen. In our prayers today, we are asked to pray for Lauren Paluda. Alexa Eilish, who have birthdays today, and for Jenny Silvies, who was last week. For Molly and Ian Dwyer, who were married here yesterday. Very exciting time. Uh, for the Stevens family, as they prepare for Cindy's memorial service this upcoming Saturday. For the McPherson family, uh, for healing for their unborn baby and rekindling of miracle bonds. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal Father, we know that it is only by your mercy that we have been redeemed in Christ. While we are in this world but not of it, we ask that you would keep your word written on our hearts and let the Holy Spirit work in us so we may speak truth with care and compassion for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, thousands of souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, fill our congregation, our synod, and the whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew us that the sacraments may be administered faithfully, and many more would be called by the gospel enlightened with your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we thank you for the blessing of our baptism, for the life renewed that you give in us. We are thankful for those who are celebrating their birthdays, and also for the union of two lives into one, as we celebrate the birthday of Molly, or the marriage of Molly and Ian. Continue to keep us in your care, Lord, and bless us in all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised that all who drink from your living water will well up to eternal life. Help us show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and live with love towards our neighbor. Remove all pride, prejudice, and hate that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel shamefully but give welcome to all people in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, we give thanks to those who have served our nation through military service. And we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us and the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibility. Keep safe all who travel, bless our nation, and help us protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow. Looking always to you, from whom all these gifts come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Light of this dark world, Heavenly Father, you have sent the Holy Spirit to your church as the Comforter. Soothe the wounds of your people according to your will. Bring restoration to broken families. Heal the sick, uplift the depressed, provide for the poor and uphold the forgotten, and answers the prayers of all who call out for you in aid, for the Stevens family and for the McPherson family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, giver of the Holy Spirit, clear away all distractions that our hearts and minds may have be focused on you. As Christ comes to us in the bread which is his body and the cup of his blood, Help us to receive your gifts with faith and to live from them. 
Receive our praise and thanksgiving together with the tithes and offerings we bring as tokens of our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we've come to the time again for announcements, so if you have one, please make your way over to the mobile lectern so you may be heard. Uh, this is also a great time to fill out a little half sheet of paper in your bulletin to let us know that you're here, and if you have something which you're interested in, you can mark it on there, such as a meeting with a pastor, you want to help the garden team, or you want to learn to drive the minibus. Ah, we got our first one. I hope you will join me in thanking our choir. It's our last um, meeting this year, this season, um, for the gifts that they offer in worship. I mean, we have workers of all kinds all throughout uh, our community, and they serve in one way, and I just want to say thank you. Will you join me? And also, and also, I would like to share with you that during the summer, if you're somebody who plays an instrument, and you think, ah, oh, I haven't been playing for a while, and I don't know, um, sometimes having a goal, you could say, hey, maybe I would play my guitar or my clarinet or something in three weeks, Yatiti, and we can do a hymn, we could do, I mean, just anything that feels like uh, would be fun for you, and or if you'd like to sing, just let me know um, for our summer offering of music. Thank you. Hello, this August, I know as we're just starting the summer semester for MSU, but right as it starts up again, we're gonna have a mini carnival. Not nearly as big a production as we have in the past, but also having kind of food, lunch, and a couple small games along with a raffle to get students kind of reintroduced to chapel. But we're looking for people interested in volunteering or any of those types of things. So if you are, reach out to me or fill out your interest sheets and we'll kind of get there as it comes in. It's gonna be August 27th. It seems far away, but it'll sneak up on us. All right, we have been doing those monthly luncheons after church, which have been a huge success with over 50 people joining um, in fellowship and, and food, good food. Um, but to keep that going, we do need volunteers. Uh, on your interest sheet, we have the tentative dates that we're planning on for June, July, August is going to be the carnival, but then September and October. If you or a group of people are interested in providing just the main dish, and then people bring side dishes, so you would just be in charge of choosing the theme and bringing a main dish um, that month, and we can keep this going. Thanks. Mark your interest seat. All right, last call for announcements. Excellent. And one word of service there. If you volunteer for these groups, it helps the word spread, and it could be as big as you want it to be, you know, however much you're involved. But feel free to inquire. It doesn't hurt to ask and say, I'm just curious, I'd like to find out more about that. So take a moment, talk to one of the people that you saw standing up today, and find out more. Uh, we're going to stay seated for a little bit. We have a special choir uh, piece for us, so let us listen to that.
Merciful Father, we offer you joy and thanksgiving for your mercy on us. Our selves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of the men who are and suffer us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you O Lord Holy Father through Christ our Lord who rose beyond the bounds of death and on this day as he promised poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples at this the whole earth exalts in boundless joy and so with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. she was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body given for you do this for remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to all to drink saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sins do this for the remembrance of me. Taught by the Lord and trusted in his word, we are bold to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation. Please be seated. Just a reminder, there'll be three trays coming around. The first one will have the individually sealed chalices, so the body on one side, the blood on the other. There's a juice and gluten-free option in the first tray. Uh, place them in the receptacles at either end of the altar. The second tray will be the common loaf, and then the third tray will be the blood with the juice option in the middle. And since we uh, Commune in around, pick a spot, even if it's on the opposite side, and feel comfortable. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
Please rise. Now may this, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and spirit until life eternal. Depart in his peace. Amen. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us towards this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give to you his peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give them heaven, folks. <laughs>